In the last video, I showed you how I exploited a critical IDOR vulnerability on a private bug bounty program on HackerOne. And I actually found another bug on the same program. And in this video, I will show you how I did so. The other bug that I found was an admin dashboard disclosure vulnerability or admin login bypass. Basically, I was able to bypass the admin authentication system to gain access to the admin dashboard. I found this vulnerability on the admin subdomain. And similar to the last video, I created a lab to simulate the vulnerability. So let's start. In order to run the lab, cd to the lab directory and run docker compose up. If you don't have docker compose installed, you can install it with apt-get install docker compose. Once the containers are up and running, navigate to localhost on port 5000. Now when I was checking this subdomain live on a target, I was getting 403 forbidden. This subdomain was only accessible by the administrators. So without wasting any time, the next thing that I thought of was directory fuzzing. I quickly ran fuff on this subdomain and I found a logs directory that also returned 403 forbidden. And based on experience, whenever I see a directory that returns 403 forbidden, I fuzz it for subdirectories or files. And when I did that, with fuff I found an admin logs file, which returned 200 OK. And when I opened that file in a browser, I found logs with X authorized for header and a random string or a token. The very first thing that came in my mind when I saw this was maybe administrators used this header to authenticate this subdomain. So I copied one of these headers with its token and intercepted a GET request to this subdomain with verb speed and added that header to the request. And after I did that, I got back a different response, which was token expired. I even tried other tokens from the logs file, but I was getting the same response back each time. And I thought maybe all the tokens that exist here are all expired. Then I told myself maybe there's some kind of an endpoint that generates this authorization token. So the next thing that I thought of was to check the endpoints inside all the JavaScript files on this subdomain. With this one bash liner, I was able to fetch all the JavaScript files that ever existed on this subdomain. Here we echo the subdomain and then we pipe it to Wayback URLs, which is a tool that fetches all the links related to this subdomain from the Wayback machine. Then we pipe it to grep to only match the JavaScript files. And finally, we pipe all of that to wget to download them all. After all the JavaScript files are downloaded, I run a recursive grep command to only match all endpoints that match this pattern using Perl regex. Here we search for any string that starts with a forward slash. The backslash here to escape the forward slash. Then after the forward slash, we search for any uppercase or lowercase letters or any digits or an underscore or a dash. Then the first plus sign here to match one character or more and the second plus sign here to match one endpoint or more. This pattern basically matches all endpoints like these. When I ran this grip command, my assumption was true, and I found an endpoint called slash API slash request slash auth token. And when I navigated to this endpoint, I got back method not allowed. So I sent another request to this endpoint with the options method to see what HTTP methods are allowed. And I found out that only the post method is allowed. So I sent a post request to this endpoint, and with no surprise, I got back a brand new token. Straight after that, I copied the token and pasted it in the X authorized for header, and I was successfully authenticated. After that, I had to enter an email to which a four digit one time password will be sent. I first tried to enter an email I have access to, but that didn't work because only the emails from the target domain are allowed. I also noticed that I have to supply the X authorized for header each time I make requests on this subdomain, otherwise I will get the 403 forbidden error.
So after that, I tried to enter a dummy email that ends with the target domain and the one-time password was successfully generated and sent. And when I entered an invalid four-digit code, I got back invalid one-time password error. And when I tried to enter another four-digit code, my token got expired. So I generated another token and did the same previous steps, entered another invalid one-time password, and my token got expired. I concluded from this behavior is that each time we enter an invalid one-time password, the authorization token expires. But even though the authorization token expires, each time we enter an invalid one-time password, maybe the one-time password itself doesn't expire. And if that is true, all what we need to do is to brute force a four-digit number. So here's what we're gonna do. We will generate an authorization token, then we will enter a dummy email that ends with the target domain, then we will request a one-time password, then we will brute force all 10,000 four-digit combinations until we get the correct one-time password. But keep in mind that each time we enter an invalid one-time password, we will request or generate a new authorization token. And we will loop through this process until we get the correct one-time password. I coded a POC script in Python to exploit this vulnerability. The request module here to send HTTP requests. We start by calling the main function. In the main function, we define the subdomain URL. Then we loop through all 10,000 combinations. Here we send a post request to slash auth token endpoint to generate an authorization token. Then we define the headers object and supply the content type header and the X authorizer for header and set the authorization token as its value. Then we supply the email as a post data. Then we make a post request to slash request OTP endpoint with the headers and the post data to request a one-time password. After that, we redefine the data variable and supply the current one-time password and pad it with four zeros to make it four digit number. Then we make a post request to slash submit OTP endpoint with the headers and the one-time password as a post data. And we set allow redirects to false to prevent Python from being redirected to any page if we got the correct one-time password. Then we print the one-time password with the response status code to the screen. And finally, we check if the response status code is not equal to 401 unauthorized. Because if we got any status code other than 401, that means we have found the correct one-time password. And if so, we print a correct one-time password to the screen and we break the loop. I ran the script and after a while, I found a long-awaited one-time password. I quickly requested a new authorization token and entered the correct one-time password and I got redirected to the admin dashboard where everything related to the platform was disclosed to me. This vulnerability was patched after only one hour from the report submission, judging by its severity. And that's it for this video guys, I hope you liked it and learned something new from it. And hopefully you can find similar bugs in the future. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and also turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss anything that comes out. And thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Peace.